Hello, lightning quick VCR repair? What does cease and desist mean? Getting down to the nitty gritty here, I'm going through my 40 through 31 favorite games of all time. And uh, I don't need to throw in the caveat, as of right now, 2023, yada yada yada, right? But I'm going to start here with a game that I feel like pretty much I'm the only champion of this one, and I really wish more people would try it out. This is a modern classic, at least to me, and in part because it looks like a classic game, but that's not a compliment. My number 40 is a game called Push. This is from Prospero Hall, a very simple deck of cards. You shuffle it together, you start flipping over cards. There's colors and numbers, and you're trying to make stacks of cards that will give you the most points. You can make up to three stacks, and you can never repeat number or color in those stacks. And if you ever reveal a card that you can't place out, you bust, and you lose out for the round. And other people get to grab those stacks of cards. But if you choose to stop before that, you claim a stack of cards for yourself, and those numbers are points. But the next two players can grab if there are remaining stacks left. So you're setting up good stuff for other players, and other players will be collecting positive points and stuff on turns that aren't even theirs. So everyone's always engaged in this game. And there are also some negative cards that force you to roll the die. So you can make a really juicy stack for yourself and make other players roll the die. And if you roll the die, you say you roll blue, you lose all the blue cards in front of you. It sounds meaner than it is. It's just a fun push-your-luck game. It's so silly. It's so engaging. Everybody is always in on the action because they might get some great points on their turn. And yet, you can also make a great decision on your turn. Instead of pushing your luck and putting cards out, you can say, I have so many points in blue, I'm just going to skip my turn, flip over all my blue cards, and lock them in. I will never lose those. There's some great little things about this game that, that make it so fun. I could keep talking about why this game is so good. Go watch a review. Go pick up a copy. It's cheap. I really, really like Push. I love Push Your Luck games. I love games where you just shuffle a deck of cards and say, I'll teach you as we start playing, and that's how this one is. So remember, kids, you never want to knock over a marble statue. You wouldn't want it to get busted. Moving to 39, this one is a little bit bigger, a little bit more complicated, but not too much. And that's what's great about it. My number 39 is Blitzkrieg, World War II in 20 minutes. Now, I am going to cheat just a little bit and say that this is going to be a combined place for both Blitzkrieg and Caesar. I know they're not even that similar of games, they're in the same line. But I'm struggling to figure out which one I enjoy more. And as I've been wrestling with that, I didn't want it to take two different places. So right here, uh, 39 Blitzkrieg. Now last year... Blitzkrieg was at 94 on my list, so this is one of the biggest jump ups that we've seen on here. I really like this system. Uh, bag pull, and then from the few that you have there behind your player screen, you're placing these pieces out, and you're trying to, uh, in, in Blitzkrieg in particular, you're trying to win different theaters of combat out on this map, and, uh, and there's ways to earn points while, uh, while just kind of moving the marker towards your side, and there's other ways that you can kind of gain advantage over your opponents, but when, if you lock down one of those sides, you start shooting up on the points. I love that it's a very simple race. I really love what's going on in here, and it has a cool look that feels throwback, but still very clean and very understandable. So I'm a very big fan of Blitzkrieg, very big fan of Caesar. That one is a, a bit of a different game where you're doing more of a tactical map control, but both of these are so good. And a huge jumps up, like I said. So my number 39, Blitzkrieg, World War II in 20 minutes. My number 38 is another fantastic Phil Walker Harding game called Baron Park. This debuted on my list four years ago, or at five, back in 2018, at number 16 on my list. Last year it fell down to 44, back up just a few steps over to 38. 
This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, polyomino game. You are building a bear park with koalas, not bears. Phil Walker Harding, the Australian, cried when the publisher said that they must include the koalas because the cute factor. He didn't cry, but he made them include a note that said koalas aren't actually bears. So I really like this idea of building up the Gobi bear and the polar bear and the panda bear exhibits. It's a very fun polyomino game ba that, based on what you cover, are going to be the tiles that you get that you could place for the next round. It's a lot of fun, very, f you know, very simple kind of mechanisms, fill in spaces, race to complete uh, the four tiles of your bear park, race to complete the bear park completely, race to get the unique types of exhibits because they're worth more points the sooner you get them and fewer the longer you wait. This is one of those things that to me has just become like a signature Phil Walker Harding design note. You can see it in some of his more recent games used as well because it's just that good. Simple, intuitive, and so good. That's why Baron Park, probably my favorite polyomino game, and the game that's sitting here at my number 38, Baron Park. Number 37 is one of my more clearly Ameritrash kind of picks, and that is Nexus Ops. Nexus Ops is a very fun game where you're trying to complete different objectives to score points. The best way I've heard this described is that, unlike Risk or other types of uh, troops on a map and conflict games, where you are supposed to make the best moves possible, Nexus Ops really throws a wrench in those gears by giving you these objective cards and encouraging you to do, sometimes, some of the least logical things possible. Uh, I'm going to go completely out of my way because I want to destroy a Rubium Dragon. That'll give me three or four points all at once. And so, uh, I had all this great area built up over here. I'm going to ditch that. I'm going to go on this wild goose chase because I really want to do that. It gives you bonuses for all sorts of ridiculous things. If your weakest unit kills anything, I complete this objective card with a bonus point or two. I really like this one. It is, it is, if this had come out in the 90s, I would have been like, this is like StarCraft the board game. I know there's an actual StarCraft the board game, but this is the one I would have played because it's a lot less convoluted. Very quick, very fun, unfortunately quite out of print. I found a copy of the Avalon Hill version on eBay. And I'm very proud and very happy that I own that one. Nexus Ops currently is my 37. Uh, last year it was 33, and in 2018 it was uh, 29 on my list. So it's kind of steadily ticking down, but really it feels like it's holding on strong for being an older game as it is, and newer games keep, you know, uh, bumping up higher onto my list. So this one really impresses me, so Nexus Ops, my 37. My number 36 is my favorite Reiner Knizia game, and this is Ra. Ra is a really fun auction auctioning kind of game where you're trying to win whole lots of tiles, uh, and I mean like like groupings of tiles, which are going to score either immediately at the end of each round or at the end of the game. There's a lot going on, a lot of player interaction. This mixes the idea of auction with push your luck in such a cool way that I absolutely adore. Uh, this also had a new printing from 25th Century, which I think is mwah, chef's kiss, just gorgeous. And yeah, that elevates the game, but also I've just played it so much more. It was last year on my list 79. So this actually jumped ahead of Marshmallow Test as my favorite Kinesia game, which feels a little bit better to say that a children's trick-taking game is not my favorite Kinesia game. Uh, so I have some real gamer cred now. Uh, anyway, I am dressed up as Reiner Kinesia and talking about how much I really enjoy Raw. So that's my gamer cred, my number 36, Raw. Number 35 is on my list because I'm very fortunate to just be around a copy of it, and that's Comic Hunters. I know this one, I'm not trying to overhype it or anything like this, I think this is a very solid and competent game. It has a lot of fun versions of card drafting, gaining cards, and then you have to spend cards to pay for the ones that you want to keep. These are things that we've seen before, but there are some really neat innovations that I do feel like make this game very fresh. I like the Marvel Comics collecting theme, where it's not a superhero game, it's a game about collecting things. And I think that idea of selling off stuff to pay for the stuff you want to keep is something that I can very much relate to as someone trying to maintain their board, collect, board game collection and, you know, afford it and everything. I really do like this one. I want to see this one get picked up for wider distribution, so... I hope that it does happen. Like I said, I'm recording these as of the beginning of May. Maybe some news has changed. I don't really know, but I would like to see more people play this one. Like I said, not trying to overhype it, and definitely not trying to be braggadocious, but come check out the Dice Tower Library if you can make it out to one of our conventions or the cruise or something, and try this one yourself. My number 35, which last year was 98. It just, it, I just put it at the bottom of my list. It was growing on me. It's grown on me. 35, Comic Hunters.
Number 34, a great dice drafting Euro game that doesn't get enough love, La Granja. La Granja is so good. It's a, it's a soup of mechanisms, but it's a soup of mechanisms that I really enjoy. Contract fulfillment, dice drafting. It has this great thing where the last die that isn't drafted each round, everybody gets that. So you not only you're trying to draft the best thing for yourself, but you're trying to leave something that you think would be really beneficial for yourself if possible, but everyone's going to benefit from that. I really like this one. It's sitting at 34 this year. Last year was at 42, but this one I'm excited to see. There's a master set coming out from Board and Dice at some point this year or next. And uh, I'm worried about a box getting too much bloat, but also some of the modules sound interesting. I'd like to take another crack at this one and see what the new stuff is. But even if I just play nothing but the classic box that there is out there, La Granja is so good. And I really enjoy what's going with it. Slight area control and it's like this and that or whatever. It's also getting a reworking called El Burro. So uh, it, there's, there's a bright future apparently for fans of La Granja and that's why it sits at my 34. Moving to another game I think just doesn't get enough love. My number 33 is Cold Baron, the original board game. There's a card game, I haven't tried that one yet, but this is the one that I absolutely love. I've played a lot of times. It's a unique kind of a worker placement game where you're trying to get contracts and fulfill them and you want to get majorities of different types of contracts. You have a lot of things going on in this very small little board here, but not too much. It's, it has a nice elegancy to it that I love. You're discovering more uh, coal mines over on the side of your board, and then you can take actions to actually slide your elevator up the shaft here and deliver those wonderful tasty goodies up here to the top. Why? To fulfill contracts. That's why, and that's what everybody wants to do. Love the majorities, love the worker placement. It has a bump out system where I can go to a spot someone else went to that I really need, but I have to pay more workers than they have there, and it bumps theirs out. It's so good, it's such a classic, and I, uh, I'm less than excited about the reprint. <laughs> But I'm glad that a reprint is coming at least. Cold Baron, this year's 33. Last year, it went down to 67, but in 2018 it was 46. I just want to shot back up. I had a great play of it at the, at the retreat, or uh, yeah, one of the recent events that was so much fun. So much fun, it just reinvigorated this one for me. I went and actually got my own copy. That's how much I liked it. So, uh, also because the new reprint is super ugly. My number 33, Cold Baron. Number 32 is a small box, a simplified, distilled down version of a game called Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small. This is a great little two-player box. It's in the Lookout Spiel two-player line, a line that I recommend that has so many good games that I've talked about on various, or will talk about in different parts of this list here. But Agricola is, I think it's possibly my favorite one. It's one that's kind of held up the most. In 2018, it was number 61 on my list. Last year was 30, and this year 32. Great staying power for such a simple game. And the reason it's jumped up so much is because I started playing the expansions. The expansions, or if you get the Agricola Creature Big and Small, the big box, uh, the big box version of it, too long of a title, you get so much more variety from one game to the next, and you really change the way that you approach a very simple game about building fences and getting animals and getting resources to pay for those animals. But those specialty buildings are huge, and if... Uh, if you haven't tried this one and you like quick but thinky games, really recommend it. 32 Agricola, all creatures big and small. My number 31 is one that I just championed so much. It's called World's Fair 1893. I think this is one that maybe fewer and fewer people have played because it's been a bit since it kind of came out and made its initial splash. This is sitting at my 31. Last year when I did this, it was at 20. And then uh, in 2018, when we had done a top 100 before, it was at number 30 on my list. So it's consistently been kind of in this upper echelon. World's Fair is a great example of a very simple area majority game where you're collecting sets of cards based on where you set out cubes, but you need to have cubes in the majorities of these different areas representing some of the, the different types of exhibits that you could show off at the World's Fair. The theming is great. The art, Beth Sobel, some of her earlier stuff, fantastic. And the way that the game just makes sense and clicks and is so simple, you do one thing per turn. And yet that one thing has little three, maybe little cascading effects, but that's all you do on each turn. This to me is one of the best examples of simplicity with layers of decisions that go into making one choice every round. This is a game that I absolutely love. If you can find it and pick it up and you like mid-weight, mid-weight to even lighter games, this is a great one. So sitting at 31, World's Fair, 1893. And that's going to do it, folks. We keep trugging along here, and I hope that you're enjoying the top 100 games of all time. They just keep getting better and better. So until next time, my name is Chris Yee.
Have yourselves a fantastic day. My number 31 is one that I still just really love. It, oh, well, that's obvious. <laughs>